everyone welcome to my channel before watching this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe now let's start this video characteristic of united states maritime law part 2 as to contracts the test of jurisdiction is the maritime character of the contract and not the place where it is made or performed here again, we find some curious fictions such as the holding that a mortgage of a ship is not a maritime transaction but only a banker's business on land. This troublesome rule, which the Commit Maritime Reform by its lines and mortgage convention of 1926 uh, was partly reformed in 1920 by the Preferred Ship Mortgage Act as to United States flag vessel. Shipbuilding contracts are held not maritime but terrain and a ship launch but not yet complete is not yet a vessel within the admiralty jurisdiction. Against this rule there has been a good deal of protest. A newly launched hull being shifted across a harbor can be in a collision. One may wonder whether a ship that splits in two is one ship two ship or not a ship at all. We do not distinguish between the oceans, the coast, the great sound and base, the great lakes and the numerous rivers, all or alike waters to which our admiralty jurisdiction and our maritime law apply, there is in the United States to try fluvial such as is a familiar in Europe. And indeed, this respond to a practical fact for ocean steamers as can our rivers to very great distances in everyday navigation, whereas none of Europe's rivers are navigated by ocean vessel for more than a few miles from the sea as to ruin and the as to ruin on the sign and wrap and Rotterdam on the branch of Rhine and Meusa Delta. Primer Bavan and Hamburg on the Weser and Elbe Deltas. Consequently, Europe has a rifle law very different from its maritime law. But in the United States, there is one single maritime law and jurisdiction wherever there is navigable water. An admiralty court might divide damage and fault equally but not in proportion of fault as is generally done in the maritime law of other countries. This drastic rule has often been debated, and opinion concerning it seems to be equally divided like the rule itself. The ancient rule that death is the composer of strife in the sense that damage are not given for negligence harm resulting in death has been entirely abrogated by a series of statutes, but after 100 years, the ancient rule is still perceptively regarded as fundamental. A maritime line, the use in rum, secret, in code, and unrecorded, may be enforced at any time against the ship in rum, unless there is such delay and trust in the circumstance as to permit the equitable defense of laces this flexible rule has been found to be adaptable to many different situations. The United States rule as to the liability of carriers by sea to shipper as found in statutory form in the Harter and Carriage of Goods by Sea Act is essentially the same as the Hague Rules or Brussels Convention on Ocean Bills of Lading. On the other hand, the United States law is as the limitation of an ownership liability does not resemble that of any other maritime nation some of its characteristics are discussed at another point in this article this rapid review will warn the reader that it is unsafe to suppose that maritime law of the united states just like that of europe or south america or, or South America, or even closely like that of Britain and Canada, although the historic and customary foundation of modern European and American law are, in a broad sense, the same. 
the United States Admiralty practiced, the maritime line and the right in room, choose in room, are closely identified and exist together. The right in room is only available to enforce a maritime line and only against the identical, and only against the identical ship, cargo, or freight money concern. The details of this practice are quite different from those now prevailing in England or in the British Commonwealth. In the United States, a right in room may be asserted against a ship without any regard for the presence or absence of the owner or agent. The ship will be arrested in room by the marshal of the federal court or even if the ship owner is standing at the spot and offering to give an appearance in the lawsuit. An arrest of this character can be only be released by paying the sum demand or by furnishing adequate security as a pledge to pay whatever the court shall decree to be payable. The security may not exceed twice the amount fairly claimed to be payable the excess sum is available for legal costs and for legal interest at 6% in most courts and 7% on the Pacific Coast from the date when the lawsuit is commenced or in some cases or in some cases from the date when the debt arose. The right in room is necessarily limited to the value of the rest. If a person with a good claim for $10,000 bring a suit in rem against a ship which has a value of only $8,000, the security and the decree cannot exceed $8,000. A right in personam is not so limited in amount and may, and may be enforced against the debtor's future property as well as against his present property. Ordinarily, there is no time limit for asserting any script any secret maritime lion except places. A few time limits have been imposed by treaty or by statutes, two years for salvage and three and four deaths and the high seas, one year for bills of lading. In deciding what is reasonable time, the courts will look at the time limitation statutes of the states in which they sit for analogies. The ranking of lions when que the ranking of lions when questions of priorities between competing lion claimants arise is in a somewhat confused state. As a general rule, that last the last lion in point of time outranks prior lions. The exact refers of the common law rule on the theory either that the most recent service to the ship has preserved. It as an assert that the most recent service to the ship has preferred it as an asset for the benefit of prior lion claimants or that one in whose favor a lion has attached to a ship has terribly acquired an interest in the ship subject to lions subsequently arising. However, certain classes of lion or such as seamen's wages and selfish are accorded priority over other regarded are accorded priority over others regarded as of lesser dignity, so that the ranking depends somewhat upon custom. Also, the statutory preferred ship mortgage is given priority of reliance arising subsequent in the time to its recording and end endorsement, except as to reliance for wages, selfish general average and tort claims, this bringing in the common law rule of priority to the one first in time to this extent. Lions for necessaries and supplies furnished in the home port were formerly not recognized, but this rule was changed in statute in 1910. For seagoing ship, lions are usually grouped by the foyage in the larger harbors they are ranked by 40-day periods and in various inland waters, they are grouped by the season or by the year. Okay, everyone, that's all this article today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until the next one, bye-bye.